What's up, Dad? What are you watching? I'm watching the 2016 Finals. This is the greatest basketball series of all time. Hang on, hang on. Is that LeBron? Yeah, this is when he came back from down 3-1. Yeah, that's the most overrated final series of all time. How? That was the 73-9 Warriors. Because LeBron played against Twitch streamers and podcasters. What are you talking about? There were 73-9. and nine. Who was guarding LeBron? Draymond Green. And what does Draymond Green have? A podcast, but that's all I need to hear. We're done with the 2010s. The 2010s had Kobe, Kevin Garnett, LeBron, Kevin Durant. Steph Curry. Yeah, all those bums are trash and would not amount to anything in today's NBA. What do you mean they wouldn't do anything in today's NBA? They dominated. It's easy to dominate when you're playing against Uber drivers and DoorDash employees, man. DoorDash? Steph Curry revolutionized the game. Show me a clip of him playing good defense. He didn't need to. He could just let Draymond Green guard another guy. A podcaster. As a matter of fact, don't even get me started on the bubble championship. You've got to be kidding me. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Monday, March 18th, 2024. I'm J.E. Skeets here in the Classic Factory, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Podcast listeners, this is for you. Next to him, it's the bearded one, Matapsha Hot Boy, Trey Kirby. Ayo! Ayo! And last but not least, over yonder, still making the magic happen, it's Eshwa Kid. How y'all doing? What's What's up, up? Esh? Hello to everybody joining us live on YouTube. We went early huh. on a Monday, starting this week off right. Click, like, subscribe, thrive. Do what you got to do. Podcast listeners, leave your boys a five-star rating and review. Let's jump right into it. Maybe we'll sprinkle in some March Madness talk later on. Saw our Jackrabbits were a 15th seed. Oh! Upset Bruin. But NBA weekend winners and losers. Let's start with the winners. Trey, I want to start with you. I think you've got a pretty obvious one, because what a game we had on Sunday there. Easy winner of the weekend. Had to hop in the dock as soon as it happened to claim Kyrie Irving (laughs) with one of the best game winners you'll ever see in your life. Mm -hmm. The lucky lefty on St. Patrick's Day. Two (laughs) nice catches on the right wing. A couple of dribbles into the lane. The 20.1 footer with the left hand almost swishes it over a tall defender in Nikola Jokic who took away his step back. Kyrie said he saw he had the left hand. Why not just go with it? Oh, my God. What (laughs) Afterward, he said, yeah, I practice that. And I believe it. (laughs) It looked too smooth and too easy. He was talking about how he goes back and watches YouTube to study other people's moves. Whose move is this? That was no way he was doing this. I mean, Kobe Bryant has probably made some lefty hook shot floaters <laughs> in his career, but never a game winner, never at the buzzer. Skeets, I know you don't like it when players stare at their left hand, especially mm-hmm. guards, but even you got to admit he earned this one. I don't like it when they do a layup with their left hand. They're professional basketball players. Yeah. You don't need to look at your left hand like that was impressive. If I can do it, it's not that impressive. But this... That was Absolutely, Trey. I had no issue with the <laughs> celebration where you got to look at his southpaw there and go, I did that with my left from 20 feet yeah. over Jokic. Uh, yeah, no issue with that. One incredible game. Come back from the Nuggets. Some huge shots and, and a, a missed shot there from Jamal Murray to set up this from uh, Kyrie. That, that You're right. It sounds sort of crazy, but that's going to be one of the greatest game winners you're ever going to see. Just the shot difficulty test. Yeah, it proves a lot of people right when they say, I think he's the most skilled player to ever play the game. Kevin Durant, known for saying that. Kyrie is the most skilled player to ever play the game because his hands are so damn good. That wasn't a short hook. That was a very long hook slash floater, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) That was a perfect look at... I'm glad he stared at it. I'm so glad he he stared at it. I was was waiting for him. Come on, man. You got to look at that thing because... There aren't too many things. You know, the Shaq, he always used to do that. Look at his left <laughs> yeah. hand. Yep. But that was worthy yes. of a long stare. <laughs> that, that was a magician. I mean, that was really cool stuff. I can't believe you said it happened on St. Patrick's Day. A year to the day where Maxi Kleba hit a game-winning three on March 17th, year prior against the Lakers, where Kyrie got like triple teamed in that yeah. one, if you remember, uh, where they threw a bunch of guys at him, anybody but Kyrie, uh, a year ago. So Kleba hit the three. And then a year prior to that, they didn't play on the 17th, but they played on the 16th. Dinwiddie had a game winner at the buzzer (laughs) against the Nets. What is it? The the luck of the Irish here, really, for the (laughs) Dallas Mavericks. I guess they have a little green in their jerseys, but... Kyrie O. Irving. Yeah, that's right. What a shot. And, you know, 
huge win for Dallas too when you're looking at the Western Conference standings. Obviously, um, you know a, a, a big loss on the other side. Uh, not as big, I guess, with the Nuggets where they are, but still huge, huge win, I guess, for Dallas. All these matter here with a month to go in terms mm-hmm. of where you're going to be seated. They've gotten their a good run back because it was great for a while and they went terrible yeah. for a while, but they are kind of back. And Kyrie obviously does this. Yep. Yeah. On the day of other ones, I was I was looking on Twitter. I was looking to see when did we make fun of somebody who looked at their left hand that shouldn't have. Somewhere on Twitter, I can find this thing. Uh, it was Seth Curry. Remember, we called him worst of the week one <laughs> oh. one day years ago because he made a layup with his left hand and ran back yeah. on the floor looking. At his, he can do it. He obviously they can all do it. can. They all can. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, at least 99 well, percent of these NBA guards, can. especially guards, especially. Yeah. Yes, maybe big. Not. Sometimes you can look at your left. <laughs> what was cool when I was on Twitter and I was looking through all the angles was the angle of Kyrie Irving's face from behind the backboard with him looking at the clock as he yeah. took those couple dribbles. He's looking up at the clock, getting his feet right. But he already knows how to do that any anytime he wants to. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the ability to look at the clock and know how much time he has to hit a lefty friggin' hook. Any other notes feet, from, from the Mavs win here and Kyrie shot? I don't think the Nuggets should have lost that game. I mean, they were down big going into crunch time, but that's how they do it. Yeah. They hit the gas, get back into it. Jamal Murray hit a shot to put him up three with 21, 27 seconds left. And then the Mavs got it back like instantly right on the inbounds. Luka comes up to the top of the key, hits a three to tie the game up with 24.2 seconds left. And then Jamal Murray just went too early. Yeah. Like, he didn't need to shoot it with six seconds remaining or whatever it was. The Mavs got the rebound with about three seconds. Quick timeout um, by Jason Kidd, which advanced the ball because I don't think Tim Hardaway Jr. was probably getting a good look (laughs) rebounding it at the free throw line, but he was ready to go. Uh, We saw two buzzer beaters yesterday. Both times, the offense, the team that ended up losing, just shot the ball way too early. When you have the ball and the clock is running down, take the shot as the time is going down. Yeah. As time expires because then you're going into overtime. Yep, it's a good point. I think... uh... Credit to the Mavs bigs for the job they did on Jokic as well. I mean, slowed him to a 16, 11, and 7 game. He only shot 6 of 16. I thought they were very physical with him. You know, we're talking Gafford and Lively and every big they could chuck at him. Did a good job on him. Um, Jokic was a a little out of sorts there on Sunday, but that was a big reason why the Mavs also got the victory. But what a shot. I mean, that's just... They were talking about it in other broadcasts later on that night. Yeah, it got four and a half... Out of five on the Hori scale on NBA.com. I think it was docked 0.5 just because it wasn't in the playoffs. That was the only reasoning <laughs> okay, I could enough. come up with uh, why it wasn't a perfect five for five on the Hori scale. <laughs> you had to come up with the reason they didn't say. Well, I know they did not. a little bit. <laughs> you imagine. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. They didn't really spell it out, but that's why. It's the, the stakes, I guess, of the game. Yeah. You know, imagine that happens in a playoff game, then yeah, that's five for five. But yeah. still, awesome shot. Let's keep it going. I would like to give an NBA weekend winner to other short kings. Kyrie, small guy, really in the league. And a couple other guys had some big weekends, small, short kings. Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Thomas. Okay, Brunson, he scored a game-high 42 points, 17-28 shooting from the field in the Knicks' 98-91 win over the Kings on Saturday. He became just the fourth different player, first guard in franchise history to record consecutive 40-point games. So Jalen Brunson joining... Bernard King, Patrick Ewing, and Carmelo Anthony. Like, those are basically like three of the greatest Knicks of all time. I mean, on the top of a lot of people's lists. I know there's some other ones, Clyde and all that, but now Jalen Brunson there going back to back 40 burgers. They needed all of them, too. And really, in, in sort of both the games, but especially this one, Davion Mitchell, Keon Ellis, they're just getting cooked. Those guys are good. They're known as decent dogs so defensively. He was embarrassing them, I thought. Spin cycle, bumping off track, and he had the three ball going in that Saturday night game. And, you know, their defense did their part too. Hartenstein, awesome. Hart, OG. They kept the the Kings to 91 points. This is a high-scoring team here in Sacramento. So great job from the defense. And then Brunson just is enough right now to carry him to these victories because he's he is just he's un, he looks unstoppable right now. He just go, he'll go wherever he wants. It's like it's not an issue. His feet work are incredible. Good game from him. Any, any thoughts on Brunson here? The guy's freaking phenomenal. When they signed him, he had one 40-point game on his resume, and that was a playoff game. Yeah. He now has seven this season with the New York Knicks. 
Uh, that that's remarkable to uh, sign him to a contract that said some people said, oh, "Come on, that's too much. That's too much." And he was doing that in the playoffs when Luca was out. He had that forty point game. He had a thirty point game, and the Knicks said, "All right, let's go." And it's been yeah ten years basically since they had a guy who had back to back forty point games in Carmelo Anthony. You know, you got to give some Willis Reed love. Some some of those guys, uh, lots of love when you talk about the best New York Knicks because Melo, he's, he's there. But he's he one of the best Knicks ever. One of the best Come Knicks on, ever, five. especially when we're talking he's still scoring, more than the, scoring the an, basketball. As a Nick. Yeah. S- yeah. Scoring, scoring for sure. It's one of the most important things. S- scoring? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. He won one playoff series. I, I, we'll see what Jalen Brunson does. Anyways. He's got one. You're right. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but that was a cool ending when he hit that last shot with Keon Ellis was on him. Who, who was looking all around for a pick. He was looking for a yeah. pick. Who's going to pick me? Who's going to pick me? Who? So Jalen Brunson just waved and was totally lying. He said, come on over. And then Keon Ellis looked around Look. his shoulder, and then Jalen Brunson just went, boom, gone. <laughs> gotcha. And, and, and you can see Keon Ellis. This was another thing on Twitter. This is what Twitter is good for. I guess Keon Ellis turned around. Oh, you can see his face. Just like, ah, what am I doing? Uh, so that was cool. Another Monster cool game. Uh, he, he is built to play in the era where they're not calling fouls. Brunson, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he plays like that anyways. Like yep. He was getting extra free throws in the first half of yeah. the season, but he's used to playing through contact because it's slow it down, bump, 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 step away, and I'm hitting an 18-footer. He does it all the time, so now that uh, he doesn't get foul calls, it doesn't matter. He only took four free throws and still scored 42 points. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. And like you mentioned, the Knicks' defense... They've turned it on. They're the best defense in the league since the All-Star break, and that's with only having OG back for a handful of games here. They will get Randall back at some point, allegedly. I know he's out there playing tennis, but he will be helpful (laughs) whenever he comes back. The Knicks, though, they're kind of built for the playoffs, so they might get two series wins, depending on how things shake Mm -hmm. out. And then Isaiah Thomas, just to show him some love, according to Shams, the 11-year vet, uh, he's planning to sign a 10-day contract with the Phoenix Suns. Um, so, you know, he had been playing in the G League with the Salt Lake City Stars, uh, which is the G League affiliate of the Utah Jazz. He joined them earlier this month. In four games, he averaged 32 and a half points per game, couldn't miss a three, five assists, three boards, over a steal. So he now gets a, an opportunity to join a roster here. I, I don't know how much he's really going to play. It's not like Phoenix really needs offense. They need a defense, but good for him. You know, this two-time All-Star, he had talked a lot about, like, he could have gone, you know, overseas. He really wanted to get back to the NBA. That, that's the plan. That was always the plan. I guess uh, Danny Ainge sort of made this happen, where he got him onto the G League team. There, again, the Utah affiliate. And now he's going to sign, a, in theory, sign a 10-day here with the with the Suns. This, uh, a true short king at under six <laughs> One feet. One of the shortest yes, kingliest. Yes. You know, what's yeah. Brunson listed at? He's 6'2". He's probably not that, though. He's probably... He's probably honestly six six one, uh, so he's short enough in the NBA <laughs> to to lump under Shark Kings. Uh, all right, let's go to you, Tass. Who do you have for uh, weekend winner? The New Orleans Pelicans, because we are going to see Zion Williamson in his first playoffs ever very soon. Let's go. Let's get it started. I remember last week I was saying, you know what? This New Orleans Pelicans team could snatch that four seed from the Los Angeles Clippers. They are looking. Good. We might see Zion running out on his home floor the first two games of a playoff series. They got the tiebreaker against the Clippers if they beat them and all that. And then they laid a huge dud uh, to the Cleveland Cavaliers. But you know what? They made up for it. They made up for it this weekend because Friday against the Clippers, Zion was incredible. And primarily the defensive end, which you don't really see from Zion a lot. He was going and guarding Kawhi Leonard. And he shut him down a few minutes left in the fourth quarter forcing a miss from Kawhi. That was pretty cool to watch. Kawhi, a 23, of course, he can get 23, no problem, but it was a little bit quiet because Zion was good. He had three steals in this game. And third quarter, just to to add on to that defensive end, you don't see an, a play like you saw from Herb Jones, which was Paul George getting the ball at the three-point line. Herb Jones, in his own paint, sprints out! Blocks that shot mm. and gets that ball and dunks it on the other end. That's pretty freaking cool That's to amazing. see. We just had a lot of good shots. Carlos Alcaraz, you want to talk tennis? No, we knew. Uh, but that was a very cool play. Uh, and Zion, uh, it was three and a half seconds left in the third quarter where he got the ball in the backcourt. 
And he literally went through four clippers to get to the rim. It was so cool how fast he was. Three and a half seconds going through four players. It kind of looked like a a football player running the 40 and going through every single potential defender. Uh, He had 34 points and seven rebounds against the Clippers. But I just want to talk about the end of this game because it was interesting because Zion took over at the point guard spot. They said CJ McCollum not having a great night. Sit for the last few minutes. They went Zion three wings and Larry Nance at center. So Zion, Herb Jones, Brandon Ingram, and Trey Murphy at the wings with Larry Nance. The lineup doesn't play that often. Never, basically. (laughs) Only five minutes this season. The last three and a half minutes, they said, Zion, you're the point guard, dude. Let's do it. These are the possessions at the end. They got a Nance layup. Trey Murphy did miss a three. Then another Nance layup. Then Zion went to the free throw line, hit a free throw. Then a Zion layup. And they took care of the Clippers. 3-1 3-1 and one against the Clippers this season. It is a potential playoff preview. It oh, looks yeah. like... 4-5, it looking like this. Yeah, exactly. Whether the Pelicans will be the home team, whether the Clippers will hold yeah. on to it. I have a theory that whoever's the five seed in that matchup is going to actually win the series. <laughs> I don't know if you want home court advantage. Ty like, loves road court advantage. I, I, uh-huh. I think it's true in this yeah. weird matchup. I feel like between the Clips and Pelicans, whoever's the five seed is going to steal one of those ones, uh, maybe the first game or one of the first two on the road. I, I don't know. Not that they're going to be playing to like fall into fifth, mm-hmm. but it'd be a fun matchup, I think, oh, this gosh, these yeah. two teams. Yeah, and they match up really well because who is going to – stop Zion on the Clippers team that's, you know, a tad small. Obviously, you know, Kawhi can try. Paul George can try. But they are a little bit small. Anyways, they match up pretty freaking well against that team. And they are a great road team. They're one of the best road teams in the Western Conference. Uh, surprisingly, a 21 and 13. There you go. Stay in fifth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be throwing games down the stretch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if they, they, if they will catch the Clippers uh, when it comes down to it, but they do have the tiebreaker if they do. So, yeah, maybe they just want to lose that tiebreaker. Throw the tiebreaker. Call the office. Maybe call the front office, the league office, I should say, and say, can we just do away with the tiebreakers? I don't know. TBD. Uh, Sun- Saturday versus Point- Portland doesn't really matter as much. They beat Portland. Zion Williamson, best flex in this in this NBA, I think. Literally flex. He I, actually I, flexed. Yeah, actually. Yeah, a lot flexed. of times they just like put their arms up in flex position without going full muscles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zion went full muscles. He yes. Good. That was nice. It was nice. I don't even know if he's flexing, to be honest. He's just like really <laughs> muscular. <So laughs> Could be. Biggest buys in the, in the game. Um, McCollum had a bounce back game against his old team, a 30 spot. Will Guillory on the athletic has a nice breakdown on this team and how they are flowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, flowing really well. And, uh, Zion is the main reason for me. Couple things with Zion. He's uh I guess six games away from beating his most games played in a season. He's at 56 right now. 61 is the most he's ever played in a season, so he should eclipse that. You keep blowing my mind when you say, "Wow, we're going to get Zion Williamson in a playoff series." Yeah, we have like, seen wow, it. We yeah. haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, so that's fun. And then yeah, I mean, Trey Murphy Obviously, a huge threat out there to shoot the ball. Like, this guy takes a three so much, but he hits it at a high percentage. And then that Herb Jones defensive play, man, that was that was a fun lineup with Point Zion. And then all that length uh, and Larry as the center there. But that, I mean, you don't see a... You don't see in today's NBA that play all that often to block mm-hmm. the three at the top and then go the other way, like collect it all in one motion and score on the other end. Fun team. I don't... Th- this will be a fascinating, like... Are you going Clippers? Are you going Pelicans? Like, I feel like this will be a real, you're going to see a lot of people taking one, a mm-hmm. lot of people taking, it'll be split, it feels like, uh, with the way they're playing both these squads right now. I don't know who on the Clippers could possibly guard Zion because he looked unstoppable. It was one of the games where he just takes a left-handed layup every time down <laughs> yeah. the court. I think he took 21 shots. The furthest was from seven feet away. And he made so many of them because when it was a center, they would be in drop coverage, and you're dead. You're yeah. instantly dead right then because he just rumbles to the hoop and yep. shoots it over the top of Zubac or Tice or whoever it may be. P.J. Tucker, like, did a decent enough job of staying in front of him, but not quite quick enough to hang with Zion, so it's going to have to be, like, Kawhi. Is that going to work? I don't know. Zion's got a lot of strength on Kawhi. Kawhi's obviously got quick feet, long arms, quick hands, Yeah. but that will wear him down because Kawhi's been having some big first quarters and then really tailing off afterwards. The other thing that impresses me, the Pelicans are – 
quite clearly playing for each other right now. CJ McCollum, he's pro- he's their highest paid player, I assume, right? Sitting on the bench yeah. mm-hmm. for this, and yeah. the team looks like they're clicking. Like Larry Nance Jr. got two baskets under the hoop, and they were off of like three driving kicks before he finally catches the ball and dunks it. They got a steal with a minute left against the Clippers where Ingram deflects the ball. Larry Nance Jr. and Herb get on the floor. It ends up being a run out for Zion. They get a free throw on it. They're just locked in with each other right now. They don't have... A lot of playoff experience, obviously none with Zion, but we've seen them in postseasons where they're a tough out at the very least. So if they're able to get Zion healthy to the playoffs, he's playing the best he ever has right now on both ends of the ball. Uh, so I can't wait to see if the Clip- if the Pelicans can actually do something yeah. in the playoffs. And yeah, just that man in the playoffs, it, it is odd to think when he was drafted. It was five years ago, yeah. but because of injuries, he wasn't able to join the Pelicans for that decent series against the Phoenix Suns where they took them to six uh, for that run but they are absolutely playing for each other as you said Trey because Zion at the point guard spot I remember five years ago when they were drafted we thought Zion's playing center Zion could play center the dude is playing point guard and they'd (laughs) say CJ you have to take a seat here Willie Green is is telling his highest paid player you got to sit down Zion comes in and it was a close score at the end uh, when Zion was able to take that point guard spot, and he just executed every single possession. So Zion, the point guard, is really, really interesting. He's obviously extremely capable of doing that, so very fun. Okay, Pelicans get a winner of the weekend. Let's do another round. Trey, back to you here. Golden State Warriors get a winner of the weekend. I think most importantly, they got Steph Curry back after he missed three games with a sprained ankle, and I would say he generally looked like Steph Curry, only three for ten from mm. three. I that it'll come around, but he went scoreless in the first quarter, finished with 31 points, five assists, and he must have had like 18 secondary assists, I think, in the second half when the Lakers were trying to get the ball out of his hands, and he would just get it to Draymond, and Draymond would play four on three, find Kaminga or Wiggins for a lob. Also, Steph had a great defensive play this game, just ripped LeBron half court with like a minute and a half left, and that was basically the game, but I thought the Warriors looked like the Warriors once again, knowing they had Steph back and using his shooting and the gravity he creates just to create advantages, which is why Draymond, I thought, had such a good game. Curry was his usual self scoring on, like, continued cuts where you're like, oh, we covered him. There's no way he's open. And then suddenly Draymond dimes him up for an easy layup under the hoop. Kaminga was hitting jumpers in this game. LeBron had 40. (laughs) Turned it on in the fourth quarter, but I was like, this is like a quiet 40 almost uh, for LeBron. This was a fun game to watch. It ended up going the Warriors' way. They're now in ninth in the Western Conference, which is big time because it definitely feels like we're getting Warriors-Lakers somewhere in California for the 9-10 game. Mm-hmm. You would rather have it at home than yeah. on the road. So this was a win for the Warriors because they got Steph back. They won the game, and everything was all good except for the clock. I was going to say, fun mm-hmm. game to watch an until the final two minutes, which took 20 <laughs> minutes to end the damn Crazy, game. Crazy, bro. That was insane with all of the reviews and the shot clock malfunctions. It took... 20 minutes of real time for the final that basically two minutes of the game. <laughs> we had this one on uh, at, a, at a party, and it was into the game for the most part, keeping an eye on it. And then when that happened, I mean, people were getting up and leaving. No one cared after that. It lost all momentum uh, in an otherwise entertaining game and a big win. You're right. The Warriors uh, now jumping the Lakers in a ton- in a 9-10 matchup, hypothetically. Yeah, the video reviews were tough. Uh, As Mike Breen said on the broadcast, he'd never seen anything like this since he started calling games, which was strange. Ben Affleck was like slumped (laughs) over in his courtside seat, like going, oh my God, man, I got to get out of here, man. Get him some Duncan, wake him up. (laughs) Holy crap. LeBron went Danny Glover mode. I'm too old for this shit. (laughs) It is. Like, we're laughing about it. And it fortunately doesn't happen all that often. Like, when you pair all the reviews and then the shot clock malfunctions. Like, but, man, does it kill a flow of a game? Like, especially, like, you know, even the reviews and then they're taking away points from prior plays with LeBron and all that. It's like, what is, uh, (laughs) it's like, we're actually hurting the product by trying to get it too perfect. If that makes sense. Like, trying to get everything absolutely right is actually sort of hurting sometimes these games. But. I agree. Too good. many reviews, but this one was like mm. <laughs> shot clock problem. Well, yeah. They tried inbounding the ball like four times. They're like, nope, still not working. Still not working. <laughs> then they had to count it down. 
just put like 80 shot clocks back there so we never have to see that again. Mm. <laughs> they should have backup shot clocks. Right. I mean, they do have backup yeah, shot clocks, do, yeah. but they should have backups for the backups. Yeah. There's yeah. no reason not to. There's Unless, enough space. It was We've a, been in the bowels. It was a wiring yeah. issue or something like that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, but the Warriors. Uh, Upgrade your cables. Let's go uh-huh. back to you, Tess. Who else do you have as a winner? Bobby Portis of the Milwaukee Bucks mm. because he called for the basketball like every <laughs> basketball player has called for it at some point of their career and then he hit shots when he got it after calling for it and we got it on tape here let's hear it Not every basketball player has tried that at some oh, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not as high pitch. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know your your bird calls. Was that like a, a duck tray? I don't know. Is I mean, that a warbler? Yeah, that sounded like a warbler of some <laughs> yeah. sort to yeah. me. Yeah, I don't know if you really warble when you call for a ball, but we've all done it, right? Some sort of woo woo. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like yeah. over here, oh, yeah. give me the freaking ball yeah. kind of thing. I'm making a sound to let you know <laughs> yeah. I'm over here and I am open. Yeah, and you don't really hear it too often in NBA games. I mean, we no, don't, not we like don't, that. No, <laughs> not the sound up there. Because the he mic had, segment. And uh, he was hitting shots as soon as he oh, caught that. He was on thing. fire. Didn't he have 25 at the half? 25 in the first half of this game. <laughs> Hot Bobby. More, the hottest more, Bobby. Most points in the first half off the bench for a player this season. Right. And he finished with 31. It was, you know, the, the, the Bobby story, very good story. The Bucks also a good story. No Giannis in this game. Yeah. And they were able to just keep hitting shots. This was, I mean, it was a little like Zion playing with three wings. Damian Lillard playing with just shooters who just were ready to shoot. They hit 18 threes in the first half. Tied for the most threes and a half in NBA history. 18 threes and a half is the most. They slowed down a little bit, so they didn't come to the most threes in a game at the end of it. But it was cool for the Bucks because Chris Middleton was also back. Missed 16 straight games. And he looked like Chris Middleton, who helped win the championship, hit 22 points. So that's that's nice that they have the depth that they're able to just keep Chris Middleton injured, air quotes, injured as long as he possibly needed to. And he's come back and they scored 140 for the game against the Phoenix Suns. That's a lot of freaking points, a 140-129 game. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've started to grab that two seed from the Cleveland Cavs. It's it's really like they've, they've gripped it. They've grabbed it. And they're they're kind of like a, a meh road team, so they're they're pretty average for being a, a second seed on the road. So they need it, and if you know, who knows who knows wins that wins two series to get to the Boston Celtics. But it feels like the Boston Celtics will be in that conference final against somebody. Could be the Bucks, could be the Knicks. Who knows? It was a good win without Giannis. Bobby Portis, huge reason why. All these guys hitting threes, massive reason why. I think they have a really good record when Giannis doesn't play and Dame is their main guy. I want to say they're maybe undefeated. Hmm. Might be 4-0 in those situations. But when it's flipped and there's no Dame and it's just Giannis, the record's not as great. Uh, you'd have to probably look into that, uh, into the teams they were playing and maybe situations and back-to-back and all that to really figure it out if it means anything. But... You know, Dame was their leader, and he was just, yeah, kicking it out to all these guys who couldn't miss in the first half. It was wild. His son's hung around, but uh, to give up 140 to a giannis list team, I know we'll get to losers of the weekend. Suns could be one of them. They're in the mix, at least, because that was turnstile defense or just not getting out to shooters at all. Thoughts on the game? It was the same thing happened to the Suns that happened when they lost to the Celtics. They made the exact same amount of shots, but they got doubled up from the three-point line. And that's going to be a problem for the Suns because they take a lot of contested twos. Like you're saying, you can hang around that way, but you have to shoot like 80% uh, to actually win those games. 59% from the field for Phoenix in this game, and they got blown out basically because the Bucs went for 24 threes out of 41 attempts. It's just uh, simple math, and that's the problem with the Suns, which is maybe why they're bringing in Isaiah Thomas. They're like, we can't stop anybody anyways. We got to (laughs) start. We have to outscore people to win. They've got a lot of great scorers, but they need some three-point shooting as well. They got Grayson Allen. He's the best three-point shooter in the league. Kevin Durant's having his best three-point shooting season of his career, but where else are they going to do it? Because 11 threes in a game, 14 threes in a game, that's child's play at this point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and maybe they saw what uh, Isaiah Thomas was doing in the G League. Again, like I said, he was like on fire from three, so maybe you add that. We'll see how much opportunity he gets, but good win there um, from the Bucks without Giannis. Okay, lots of weekend winners left. A few honorable mentions. Bam Adebayo, 
hitting that game-winning three. You guys already brought that up against the Pistons. They steal another from Detroit, keeping me alive in the nut dust bowl standings there. Um, Ayo Dosumo scoring a career-high 34 for your Bulls there. They crushed the Wizards, 127-98. Great game from him. Rockets can't stop winning. They're on fire right now. They beat the Cavs. They've won five straight. I think it's all a little too late in terms of getting into the play-in, but they're hanging around. And uh, Victor Wembanyama, final honorable mention, Wemby joined Embiid, Barkley, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the only players with 30 points, 15 boards, 7 assists, and 7 blocks in a game. Mm. Yeah, he just keeps doing this like every three nights where it's like, oh, hold on, he joined what company? In what stats did he just put up? So that was another one there in overtime uh, on the weekend. But, 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 we got to highlight the rookies. (laughs) Grady Dick and Anthony Black, up to no good after the game on Sunday, decided to swap jerseys with one another, (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, hold them up, boys. Big smiles now. The NBA is going to love this. And what everyone wants to know. So there you see it here for you podcast listeners. Obviously, Grady Dick holding Black's jersey. So it says Black on the left. Anthony Black holding Dick's jersey. It says Black Dick. Everyone having some laughs. They're smiling. Everybody, do you think they meant to do this? Do they know what they were doing? The answer is absolutely yes. Mm-hmm. They were standing on opposite sides of each other initially. Yeah. And then we're like, yeah, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it. They went and got a camera guy. Like, they they just played the game prior. I was wondering if it happened there, like two games ago where they're like, hey, that was pretty funny. We should take a, We should swap jerseys. See what the NBA does. See if they get upset. Funny. Funny as hell. It looks <laughs> hilarious. Awesome. I love how much they're smiling and how in on it they are. And, uh, yeah, we had to slip it in. So an NBA weekend winner to, to Grady in. Dick and Anthony Black. <laughs> 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 uh, and then, of course, everyone, oh, well, now Grady Dick's like, got he, he must have a checklist. He's got to, like, do it with Kobe White. He's got to do it with Jalen Brown. Uh, people were saying Jalen Suggs would be a fun one. Nasir Little would make me laugh. Um, I would like to see Luther Head get a 10-day contract and flip it mm-hmm. <laughs> so we get a dickhead. Um, <laughs> Mark, I would love to see Luther Head get a 10-day yeah, contract. Yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, and would. uh, you know, J.R. Ryder could come back, Mark Eaton. There's lots of possibilities. <laughs> like, Dick should have a list. A dick so, list. A dick list. So the Magic posted it, too. They tweeted it. It was up for... I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe not. They took it down? Yeah, they deleted it. Come on. Yeah, it's just names. Someone, some admin did it. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And so it was, <laughs> it's hilarious. What? They're just saying hi to each other? <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> they obviously repositioned themselves. It's totally That's my true. favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> they did it for the gram. There's no doubt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, they, 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 they're going to like they're gonna print that, and they're going to have that in, in a hallway somewhere. That is a funny photo. Yeah, it's, you should display the jersey with that photo framed right Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, yes, we got it. We got it here in the show. Don't worry. I know a lot of you were waiting. Uh, it was going to be Tweet of the Night. But then it got deleted, so we'll just make it a winner of the weekend. (laughs) Uh, Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll do some NBA Weekend Losers and Tweet of the Night. Don't go anywhere. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? A lot of us wish we had more time. But time for what, huh? What would you do? The best way to squeeze those things into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. It can be empowering. You can just simply be clarifying. It's a little clarification in the brain. It can just help you understand what you want to do from day to day. Hold on, is this a therapy session? Feels kind of good for me. Just just talking about things. What do I need to do? Yeah, yeah, I'm helping myself right now. I'm starting to feel better just, just talking about therapy, frankly. It has helped me in the past, that is for sure. If you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash no dunks today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash no dunks. Okay, here on the factory, we've done NBA weekend winners. Let's do a batch of losers. Tass, why don't you get us started? Who you got? Well, Anthony Davis of the Los Angeles Lakers was poked in the eye by Trace Jackson Davis of the Golden State Warriors. He sustained a uh, swollen left eye and blurred vision after he went back to the locker and didn't play the rest of the, the game. Rob Palenka even went there to check on Anthony Davis. 
LA, LA changed the uh, the update, the injury from left eye contusion, as they said that day, to left corneal abrasion. Corneal, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. <laughs> you don't like to hear corneal. You though. don't. It makes you me know? shudder. Yeah, it does, you know. Uh, it just makes you think, like, oh, did he have laser eye surgery? Did he get those corneas worked on? Because you got to be out a couple days for that, with that, I should say, after getting laser eye surgery. <laughs> um, you know, we can talk about the Lakers and how they've dropped now to 10th seed and all that. But they lost that game because Anthony Davis wasn't playing the second half. They, they were desperately need him, mm-hmm. desperately. And there's all the drama surrounding the video reviews and all that. But it just stinks that Anthony Davis was out. And they're looking more and more and more and more like the 10th seed. At the very best, it could be the 9th seed. And, you know, I came into the season looking at that team that was the 7th seed last year and thinking they should be better. But they just aren't looking anything like that team that finished 7th. And, frankly, 7th would be way better than 10th because you just got to play one and then yeah, play the one. second seed. This one, you got to go on the road for a couple. They finish the game, or, excuse me, they finish the season on the road with a couple of regular season games. Then they have to do two more to go play the one seed if they do win both those, which would uh, just stink uh, for them. They just haven't looked good. So all that to say, hopefully the corneal abrasion is going to be all right. And uh, he will play potentially tonight, but he is questionable tonight with that injury against the Atlanta Hawks at home, which should be basically a must win. Um, but it feels like must win. Do you want to, how many more games do you want to win the rest of the season? Do you want to finish ninth or 10th really was what it comes down to. Cause they're just not catching anybody in the eighth seed. I think they just, they are desperate for all those guys, that team that looked like they could play defense last year. A lot of those guys are injured. And, and Vanderbilt, he's out. They got Cam Reddish to do this. He's out. They got Gabe Vincent to do this. He's out. So they do have injuries. All that to say, I think that is a little more important than winning a game here against the Atlanta Hawks. But anyway, hopefully he's all right. I guess the schedule is sort of kind yeah. to the Lakers and AD for this reason. You're right. They play the Hawks tonight. Does he give it a go? Does he throw in the goggles? Does he even play? But then they don't play all week. They're off till Friday. So that's good. Rest your corneas. Rest your corneas. Close your eyes. Uh, no and, screen and heal time. Up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, stay <laughs> off your phone. No Netflix there, AD. Um, but, so that's good. But, yeah, Hawks, Sixers, Pacers are those three home games, and they have a long road trip uh, where they're out for six games. But, yeah, you say uh, it doesn't really matter playing. Again, the Rockets are not that far back with the way they're playing and winning. It's, what, three, three and, and a half. half. You know, within striking distance, I think you could say that. Mm. So you got to win here enough still to keep them at bay, unless the Rockets just go on a slide. But they probably will be in the Lakers, and they'll probably be the 10th seed and maybe the 9th, and they're going to have to win a couple games just to get in to the freaking playoffs, (laughs) to then take on, you know, one of the best teams, obviously, in the league, be it Nuggets or Thunder or Wolves. So uh, uphill battle here, for sure, for the Lakers in a season where they got healthy AD for the most part, a healthy LeBron, and they're still, you know, just sort of basically a 500 team. Another silver lining is that Anthony Davis has had to wear goggles before, yeah. and he looked very cool. <laughs> <laughs> like one of his coolest on-court looks, goggles. Uh, he looked like a 1970s player. But the Lakers, they're the 28th ranked defense in the league since the All-Star break. Whoa. They got completely smashed without AD uh, against the Warriors for the last three quarters. The Warriors beat him up on the glass and scored more points in the paint. That doesn't make any sense. But if you factor in the fact that Anthony Davis was out, it does make a little bit of sense. So throw some goggles on, look cool, (laughs) win these next three games. These are all three winnable games for the Lakers. They've done a pretty good job of beating the under 500 teams and the teams they should beat, then playing about 500 basketball against actual contending teams. But I don't know. They're going to have to get lucky in the play-in because it seems pretty unlikely that they can get up to eighth. It's got a three-game lead for the eighth seed. It's feasible. Yeah. You know, they'd have to go on a bit of a stretch here, and the Lakers just haven't been able to put together a huge win streak. Okay, so uh, AD gets a loser of the weekend, and that I. What, who you got here, Trey? I got the LA Clippers. They're also a loser of the weekend. They had the big loss on Friday against uh, the Pelicans that we talked about, kind of one of the biggest seeding losses of the weekend. They lost the tiebreaker. I think the Pelicans are also leading their division, so they get the bump there mm. as well. And if you lose two games in a weekend in the Western Conference, you're going to get a loser 
Brutal loss Sunday at home against the Hawks, and they got their butts kicked. The Hawks led the final 46 minutes of this game. They were up by 21 at halftime and kept it there for the majority of the second half. The Hawks scored 48 points in the paint, more than the Clippers, had 31 fast break points to the Clippers' 11 fast break points, and Atlanta shot 17 of 34 from three, and they're starting Veet Krejci. I saw Veet Krejci go by Kawhi Leonard off the dribble. It doesn't make any sense. Kawhi and Paul George, they did all right in this loss against the Hawks. 54 points on 46% shooting. The rest of the Clippers, 39 points on 29% shooting. 17 assists on the night for the Clippers. They just looked so tired and bored and said, we've accomplished everything we needed to accomplish. Went 26-5 and five on that great run through January and February. Since then, I think they're 8-10. and 10. And it just looks like they are ready for the playoffs to start. Hurt, but you got to get to the playoffs and it'd be nice to have home court advantage i don't i know as a veteran team they probably don't care all that much going four five five four versus new orleans but i have not been impressed at all uh with the clippers lately they lit up the bulls i thought they looked incredible <laughs> in that game but maybe it was just hot shooting like paul george went 11 for 12 in that game nobody else is doing anything uh for the clippers right now they've lost four of their last five down to fourth they just got a, that one game lead on the pelicans and as soon as the pelicans catch them it's flipped because of yeah. the tiebreaker so bad weekend for la you can see where they do miss uh westbrook's like energy too big time where he can come in and if everyone's looking a little sluggish and sort of playing with like their feet in cement you mm-hmm. know wes is always going to give you energy you know it's going to yeah. be a ride half the time but never shortage of that just like trying to get guys going let's go let's play with some pace but uh, obviously he's out here for a significant amount of time i think you, you miss a guy like that um to to sort of shore up your second unit but yeah they don't look you know unfortunately that that stretch that you said there trey uh when it happened everyone's like oh are the clippers for real here oh could this be their year and then it's sort of right now back to like the clippers where you're like you're hesitant and you're like of course they they could lose in a first round series yeah, everything breaks right with Kawhi and PG as your star players. They could go very far, but you're like, I don't know. Which one's more likely? Um, you know where I land. I'm usually I'm going to veer towards it's more like a an early exit um, because of unfortunate injuries or stuff like that. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. They're a tough team to figure out. Like I said, I'm not even sure who I'm going to pick when it gets to, like, if it is Pelicans Clippers. It's going to be a flip of the coin, I think. I think the depressing thing for the Clippers is it has nothing to do with injuries. Like, Harden was back playing on Sunday. That's true. Paul George was out there. Kawhi Leonard was out there. No, Westbrook, I agree. His energy is important for the Clippers, but they've been generally healthy. I know Harden missed a couple of games. He missed the Bulls game, and then he missed that Pelicans game as well. He didn't have it going on Sunday at all. I guess he's playing through a shoulder strain, which, you know, maybe slows him down. But they've been generally pretty healthy this season, and it looks great when they look great. But now they're kind of looking like when Harden first came to the team, and they're just standing around waiting for things to happen. Yeah, it looks like a new rotation like it did when Harden got there and they looked terrible. Now Russell Westbrook out and Bones Highland and P.J. Tucker in. They just don't look like the same team. And so maybe they just got to get comfortable with that. You you see Kawhi Leonard leave that spasm game where he had spasms in his back and then came back and played back-to-back. No problem. Uh, But this Hawks game was the... The low water mark. because, Because if you look at all the losses since Russ has been out, and you mentioned their the run here, Trey. It was Milwaukee, Milwaukee again, <laughs> Minnesota, Pelicans. Okay, those, those are all fine those are losses. Teams. They're yeah. fine. And then the Hawks. The Hawks was the one where they really just, are we even trying here? Uh, it looks like they're ready for the end of the season. And maybe they want that five seed. Maybe they want to drop <laughs> from four to five so they can get on the road and <laughs> yeah. play the Pelicans because Ty Lue is, is good at that. Going back to the Cavs days. I mean, that's what LeBron did. No problem. I'll win that one game. Game one, I should say, not the one game, the game one. He'll do uh, it. DeAndre Hunter for the Hawks, just to slip this in here, had a good game against the Clips, 20 points in like 24 minutes of action. He's playing really well, DeAndre Hunter, uh, coming off the bench for the Hawks. Over his last 14 games, he's averaging 18 points per game, he's shooting 50 from the floor, 44 from deep, uh, You know, chipping in some rebounds, doesn't move the ball all that much, so not a lot of assists, but he's got to be on the El Tizo team. Which you haven't uh-huh. talked about a lot. DeAndre Hunter yeah, yeah, is a classic sure. El Tizo guy where you can start to get excited when he puts together stretches like this, but he will let you down. So don't get too excited. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's good. That's good for the Hawks fans. And, you know, they're holding on here. And that actually pairs nicely with my loser of the weekend, which is the Brooklyn Nets, who are in theory chasing the Hawks. But their playing chances, I think, went poof this weekend 
The Nets lost back-to-back games. They fell to 26 and 42. They're four and a half games back now from Atlanta, who are the 10th seed. On Saturday, Brooklyn gave up 82 points in the paint to the Pacers. <laughs> they let them get 17 offensive rebounds. They helped them out by coughing it over 21 times. Just an embarrassing game from them. They collapsed in the second half. They lost by 21 points. And then on Sunday, they put up more of a fight. They even had a 10-point advantage in the fourth quarter, and then they got Wembied. Uh, they lost to the Spurs in overtime. But those two losses right there, they finished their road trip 1-5, They come home to play the Pelicans on Tuesday night, and then the Nets have to go back on the road for another four-game stretch. That's 10 out of their 11 games on the road, and I think it's a wrap. I don't see them catching Atlanta. I don't think you should even be allowed in the play-in with, uh, you know, basically 30 wins, which they'll be happy with at this point. And I saw Nets Daily tweet this. Sean Marks stated at Jacques Vaughn's uh, um, dismissal that this team is too talented to have such a poor record. (laughs) Well, not much has really changed. (laughs) I think it's gotten maybe worse with Kevin Ollie uh, in control. They're just a bad team, and they're, they're, you know, outclassed when it comes to talent, and then maybe the coaches are making some odd choices. Bad weekend for the Nets. And I think you can – I mean, I'm ready to say I don't think they're making the (laughs) play-in. I think they're done. No, that's totally yeah. fair with how they've reacted to a coach change. It hasn't gone well since then. Yeah. I think it's the most disappointing season in the NBA of any team. Hmm. And I know the Pistons, horrendous. And you can look at other teams that are bad. The Raptors. But this te- <laughs> yeah, but this team was good last year. This team was 45 and 37. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, you can... A lot of those are Kevin Durant wins. Those are Kevin Durant wins, sure. Uh, they did do fairly well. They did way better with Mikael Bridges as their number one guy. They just had a different mentality, different locker room, different identity. They started this season so poorly, the whole thing. and The the fact that they're this poor uh, on both ends of the floor, especially the the defensive Yeah, they're not good at anything. Yeah, (laughs) Just below average offensively, below average defensively. Yeah, Um, I just had just the way they ended last season with Mikael Bridges as their number one guy, you think, okay, all right, Mm -hmm. we've got something. Lots of money for for him and for Cam Johnson, and that has not worked out. Ben Simmons was starting as their lead guard to start this season, and the identity just has not been found at all. Uh, it has, doesn't look like last year's team at all. They started three and two. <laughs> they had those two nice wins over the Hawks right at the beginning of March, uh, right? And it was like, ooh, they yeah. could actually maybe yeah. make a, maybe a play-in push here. Yeah. It's just been bad ever since. Yeah, so there you go. There are some uh, losers. Like we said, I think the Suns you could throw in as possible loser, giving up 140 to the Bucks. Um, anyone, anyone else? Any teams or players on the list? Or things Wizards that got smashed twice in this yeah. one. They got beat by yeah. 30 by the Bulls and then 30 by the Celtics. <laughs> You understand yeah. getting beat by 30 by the Celtics, but <laughs> the Bulls are not a high-scoring team, and they put up 127 on Washington. And, and I am so lucky, again, to go back to the Nut Dust Bowl rankings. Like, the Pistons have lost, I want to say, four or five games sort of in heartbreaking mm. fashion. Like, mm. you should be well clear <laughs> of my crappy Wizards at this point, but yeah. they keep coming up short, like just short in these games. Um, and, you know, they still have one win more than the Wizards, but it could have been over. You guys could have been talking to each other, you know, exchanging texts about uh, the nut medley uh, that you're putting together. <laughs> How do you feel about chili onion peanuts? I mean, I like them. Yeah, they're good. They are good. The but dust. that's going to be the a, dust a tough is... dust. Ugh. And I'm, tough I'm starting dust. to mentally prepare because I do not. I mean, you watch any Wizards game and it's a whole boy. <laughs> it's bad. It's very bad. The Pistons are a much better team. They're only one win better, but they're a much better team mm-hmm. than the Wizards. But they play each other. That's a big one. That's going to be coming a huge bad. Coming up. Huge End game. of the month, wow. I think I said. We should play next back Friday. that game. Yeah, next Friday. We should. We should play back on a Friday night. I'm busy. Uh, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing, honey? Uh, let's go out tonight. No, I got to watch the Pistons Wizards play on playback. Sicko. All right, let's get to Tweet of the Night. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Tweet. Ah. Uh, this is a fun Tweet of the Night. Uh, I was larfing all weekend long. Had this clip on repeat. Hate to do this to my guy, Amin El Hassan, but uh, at Miles Ehrlich tweeted video uh, that did say, add it to the Amin athletic highlight reel. And it's, again, Amin El Hassan uh, taking a corner three 
I guess he was playing in this <laughs> AU Celebrity Hoops Classic. I think it was in <gasps> Dallas. And the clip for you podcast listeners, you got to seek it out, is a, a funky release from Amin. <laughs> and it's a big air ball. So it's, look, hey, we've all airballed a three. We're all guilty of doing that. But it's really the release that we have a we have a screen grab of. <laughs> People are saying, let's see, he's like throwing gang signs while he's shooting here. It's crazy. It's a funky, funky follow through. I don't even know how you would describe it. It looks like he's shooting a finger roll <laughs> <laughs> from the corner. From the corner. Yeah. Uh, but the ball somehow goes straight. I don't understand how this ended up being an air ball. <laughs> To the right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense yeah, to me. That's a good point. It's a great point. It went two feet to the right, but looks like it should be two feet to the left and maybe hitting the shot clock. So, look, Amin's a good sport. He leans into it. He even tweeted uh, at Darth Amin, when the internet comes for you, the only way out is to just accept it. And he even had a gif uh, from, I believe, the mummy. So, he knows. <laughs> just give it to me. I can take it. I thought I saw you had a clip too explaining in oh, classic yeah. a mean fashion what Watch went wrong. that whole clip. Yeah, it was very funny. It was very funny. <laughs> the way he is shooting sort of to the left with that right oh. hand. He lost the ball. I guess <laughs> when he went up for it because his hand is behind the ball and then and then it ends up being yeah, looks like the number 3 he's throwing up there or something with his fingers because it looks like he just loses it. <laughs> and he does say in that video that it was a woman's ball, and he's not oh, used yeah, to. Okay. He's not used to <laughs> shooting. He it said was, a lot, and I was like, "Yeah, no." no. It was too small. No. It felt too small in his hands, so he wasn't used to it. Like, like he was shooting a mini ball. Now we're talking mini no, balls. No. That doesn't really make it. Just, it ain't that small. He said he like his best, um, you know, defense to why it looked like that is he hasn't played pro basketball or basketball, excuse me, in a very long time, and that looked like the shot of someone who hadn't picked up a basketball in a very long yeah, time. Yeah, but that wasn't a game. <laughs> You're just shooting a ball. I know, but I guess he hasn't played. <laughs> anyway, my favorite thing about Amin is, uh, you know, like us, he loves a good pun. So he was sharing some puns of, um, you know, sort of like what you would say, like an NBA player, bad, poorly. Yep. Example, Stale Ellis, Spaz <laughs> Reed, Dan Gnarly, <laughs> Cedric Airbalos. Uh, I think John Hollinger threw out a stiff curry. Mm -hmm. I loved Gordon Wayward. That one made me laugh. Uh, man, ew, Ginobili, ew. <laughs> James Unworthy, and my favorite one. I laugh so hard. Just like it's funny to just see written out like this. Jeff Hornish shit. <laughs> 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 and there were many others. I only pulled like ten. There were like another fifty that he was sharing. So he. <laughs> good. Dan Darling. <laughs> <Dan Darley. laughs> that one's gonna stick with me. I'm gonna use that on other players. <laughs> I like any of them that have a Suns connection because Amin has a yeah. Suns connection. They get an extra bump. Jeff from me. Hornish shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cedric Arbalos and Dan Gnarly, maybe the best of the. It's a tough big three. What a clip, man! What a clip. Uh, I don't. I think I don't know if his team won. Even Ben Lyons was playing in this yeah, celebrity yeah. game. I, I saw a photo of the group. Um, I think they, they looked happy in it, so maybe they won. Uh, let's call it there, though. That's weekend winners and losers, and a little tweet of the night fun at the expense of a mean to end this bad boy. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, live from the Classic Factory on YouTube. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Um, any thoughts on? The March Madness brackets. Have you filled one out yet? I Either men's or women's. Yet, but no. I will today. Okay, yeah. yeah I will take, today. You'll do a first pass? I'll, one pass only. One pass only. Yeah, I'm like Jay-Z. I only need one take. I, I read a tip. I think it was uh, in the Washington Post from like some like expert who I guess does really well at filling these out. Uh, like a bracketologist or whatever the hell they call themselves. And I do this. I fill it out where I, I look at that matchup and I move it over and I look at that matchup and I move it over. He says the way to go about it is to actually like pick your final fours or your elite eights whatever further in and put them in slot them in teams you're just confident with okay. no matter the matchup and sort of then build out i was like huh i'm gonna try it this year <laughs> sure. take that tip and apply it mm. see if it does anything who are you feeling oh the jackrabbits of course Jack Rabbits, yeah <laughs> they'll probably make it to the elite eight at least i would say 15 seed uh there's four teams that have over 30 wins gotta be uconn i know they're good yeah and then year. there's like some mid-major teams that have you know sometimes have those credible sure. records i watched a little bit of the selection show oh, uh, for the selection the show yeah and then the, the i think the women's was later i didn't see any of that one they but selected some better. teams they selected some teams yeah. nice yeah uh, i only select like one team though because i saw the guy on the during the conference tournaments on saturday it was like 
35 of the 36 at-large teams are already locked in. Mm -hmm. So one one selection. <laughs> well, I guess a the whole show for one selection. <laughs> select show. Oh, we got to know who's playing each other and all that. Yeah, uh, the schedule show, they the, call it. The, my favorite thing is the parts I saw, they would like go to the team where it'd be like, all right, uh, and the number two seed, Iowa State, you know, and show them ah, all their fans. And then it would show the team they're playing. And it was always funny to see how the team would react to their opponent. Yeah, they were just sort of just like, because you can't be like, yeah, we're going to kick their ass. You're going to be like, okay, all right. Well, we got the Jackrabbits, 215 matchup. Yeah, that's okay, right. could be tough, could be tough. Got to prepare. <laughs> Maybe not. Just, just do it. Just go over the top, say we're going to beat them. What's wrong with that? <laughs> just weird. <we're dead>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Confidence, baby, confidence. All right, maybe we'll talk a little March Madness later this week. As you can tell, we are experts when it comes to the college game. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Until then, Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, it was quite the weekend. A lot of great plays. We didn't even mention Cole Anthony stole a ball without a shoe on. Mm. He lost a shoe, tossed it to the side, and then made a beautiful steal against the Toronto Raptors. Mm. Great weekend. Really great weekend from everybody, especially Carlos Alcaraz. That guy, wow. Yeah, wow. I was watching a lot of tennis this whole, weekend. You got to watch it. good, man. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a magician out there. Yes, I watched the tennis channel to watch Carlos Alcaraz. You know there's a tennis channel? <laughs> of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Brace the day, people.